So the thing about the flight plan, though, is it is just a plan. You have to do something with it. You can't fly with a Windows base or a Mac in your plane, at least most people can't. So what you do is you need to do something with that flight plan. So let's take a look over here. This is our nav log. If I hit my share button, I have a number of different things that I can do with this nav log. I can, for example, take my PDF, I can print out a nav log PDF. I just hit download and it'll generate that. And I can take this printout and bring this into the cockpit. It shows me what my winds look like, what my expected fuel burns are like, and so on. I see my frequencies, I see my Morse code. Um, all of that is right here. Okay, so what you need to take into the cockpit is right there, conveniently ready for you to go. Switch back to FlyQ online. That's not all though. You can use that to send it to your buddy or something like that. One of the other things is, let me point out this text at the top here. It says, how would you like to share the flight plan? Note that all emails, because you can either download or send an email to someone, all the emails include route links for FlyQ and for flight. So, obviously we'd prefer if you plan all your flights using this and then you take FlyQ EFB into the cockpit with you. Obviously that's the best way to go. But should you choose to use for flight, if you send an email to yourself, you can get the nav log and it includes um, a link uh, that if you click on it and you open it on your iPad or on your iPhone, it will automatically load that flight plan into FlyQ or if you click the for flight link, into for flight. So you can use this to plan your flight no matter which app you use and then send those emails. So let's say I was to send this email, for example. Um, I'm not gonna do it. But if I want to send that email, I can type in two, three, four, five emails, whatever it may be, and I can send this to all my buddies, anyone who's coming along with me in the flight, okay? So you can very quickly distribute these. But there are more ways of doing it. So when you're actually in the cockpit, having a nav log to look at is clearly a nice thing to have. Or at least that's what, you know, the way that people learn to fly. It's the way I learned how to fly. You have a piece of paper. Nowadays, though, people often want to load them into their GPS unit. And we make that super easy to do. Anyone have a Garmin, for example? Anyone have a Dynon? If you have one of those, we're making it super easy for you. If you have a Dynon, you can just download what's called a GPX format file. It's right here. This is it. You put that onto a memory stick. You can load it into your Dynon. Super simple. If you fly with a Garmin panel, a G1000 and so on, not a handheld device, this has to be their panel systems. Then you can create what's called an FPL file. Again, download it, boom, there you go. You put it onto an SD card, you stick it into your Garmin, this flight plan is good to go. It's that simple, okay? If you wanna do this to a buddy, instead of downloading it, again, you use that email option and you can email those files to your friends, to your co-pilot, uh, to your spouse, whatever you wanna do. One more thing to do with this. So this is one of the things that I think is really cool. After you plan a flight, you check out the weather, you make sure it's going to be safe and so on. If you're just flying around the corner to get a hamburger, you probably don't really care. But if you're flying to a place that you've never been to before and you really want to take a look at what it's like, what the train is like, uh, what the airports look like and so on, there is simply no better way of doing that than using Google Earth. So we're going to make that super simple. So I'm going to pick the share option called download. Let's check this out. I'm going to click here. I'm going to double tap on my KML file. Loads in Google Earth. I'm going to maximize that. Remember we're flying from the uh, pain field in Seattle down to California. Here's our flight plan. Now this is not just a line. This isn't just a simple little two-dimensional line. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm going to zoom in pretty far. If I'm going to tilt the map, zoom in a little more. I want to show you that this is actually a three-dimensional line. Check this out. You are literally flying over the boxes. I know this part's probably a little blurry. I'm probably moving the mouse too fast. But I just want to show you what it's like moving over the train. So here, you can see the hoops that you fly through. You see the cities that you go to, and so on, okay? So you have this great opportunity to actually visualize your flight, not just by looking at a two-dimensional map, not just by loading into the GPS, not just by looking at the weather, but actually literally looking at the area that you're about to fly over. If you want to zoom down, 
and you want to see what this area looks like, it's right here. By the way, you can zoom in in particular spots. Like if I want to see what Portland looks like, I can double tap here. And Google Earth automatically brings you to Portland. So here we are. Here's a Portland airport from space. And there's our flight plan flying directly over it. Pretty cool, huh? 